Ooh. Welcome back to another video. Today we got a little Q&A for you. And this was as promised on my story. Got all the questions queued up and I'm sorry if you guys are hearing like a blender or something like that. Um, I live in, I'm living like a peasant, people. I'm uh, doing this army thing, doing this deployment thing. And we're gonna get into a little bit of that today. But if you guys could give, you, give me a thumbs up for uh, this video. And I'm just gonna try to make this one nice and organic and just talk let you guys know what's going on with me. And um, yeah, these walls are very thin. So, you know, I hear everything. And I do mean everything, guys. Like, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, first question on the list is, what is your opinion, the best investing app for beginners in 2021? <clears throat> now, I would say for beginners, uh, possibly Robinhood. But it's also the worst. So I, I kind of went over this in my other video about M1 Finance, Robinhood, Fidelity, and Charles Schwab. So it's really easy to pick up Robinhood. It's really easy to understand, you know, deposit money, get your instant deposits and swipe up and you're making a trade. However, the, fr the frictionless experience can also lead people to overtrade. So <clears throat> it is important to me to eventually move up to what I call the uh, big boy brokerages like Schwab, Fidelity, uh, TD Ameritrade, Vanguard. A lot of them are free now and they're a little bit less fun to look at, but they will offer you some better, I don't know, research, better customer service. They're just better. Okay. They're not as easy to look at and they don't offer typically as good of sign up bonuses, which by the way, if you guys want to sign up for Robinhood, I got the link in the description below where you can do that. Thoughts on inflation. So what I think about inflation is that hopefully uh, you know, the MMTers are correct. Hopefully we can use all these variety of factors such as taxation and, you know, raising interest rates and all these things. Hopefully that works to break the back of inflation. However, I do think that that might not be the case. So I am preparing myself. For example, I'm thinking about getting into another property so that if there is some inflation that takes up, takes off, I can uh, utilize that to get some equity into a property. So though that's my thoughts i'm hoping i'm hopeful that you know the one two percent inflation as measured by the official numbers is what's going to happen but i wouldn't bet my life on it that's that's what i'll say about that so anyways those are my thoughts on inflation i think that over time businesses are going to benefit from inflation as far as uh, the price of it not necessarily the business itself benefiting and people that are holding dollars are going to get slaughtered right that's been the case over time and um, yeah, I'm not too mortgage averse because in my opinion, that's a way to short the dollar as they would call it. So trying to get out of dollars, trying to get into businesses. If you look at the performance of businesses and real estate as it relates to inflation, whenever inflation takes off, typically uh, the prices of those assets that the businesses own take off as well. Location. So basically, I'm just going to take this to mean where are you? So I've been going back and forth on whether or not I wanted to even talk about this and I'm going to talk about it because I'm in Honduras and, you know, not to get too deep into saying things that I should not be saying. Um, <clears throat> they basically need help down here. They need a lot of help. And that's why we're seeing a lot of people pop up at the border, because, you know, as bad as people want to say that things are in the U.S., they're significantly better than down here on the whole. Right. So not everybody is poor or, you know, surrounded by crime down here, but the conditions are uh, on the on the whole scale much worse. Like the places that I've gone out to to help provide medical care, and you know we're we're doing humanitarian projects and <clears throat> giving money where we can, doing this or that here or there. Um, it's really opened my eyes to um, what what type of poverty there is elsewhere in the world besides the U.S. And I've met some great people down here. Uh, there really are some really great people down here, and um, they've taught me a lot of Spanish. So. That's where I'm at. Estoy aprendiendo español y uh, si quieres uh, comentar en español, voy a entender. Um, next question. What is your MOS? So I actually am not a peasant, so I don't have an MOS. I have an AOC and it's 70 Bravo. I'm just kidding. All right. I love the enlisted. But anyways, next question. Has anyone been as far as ever as decided to even go to want to do look more like i mean that's that's some deep stuff right there man um absolutely absolutely next question will you ever get married in the future um yeah i actually 
I think that that's something that is a goal of mine. I value family values. Uh, I think that it's a good way to go through life. Um, and I, I think that is something that I personally want to do. So I think that, you know, it, it, and I'm not, I'm not the wise, the wise guru here, you know, me at 28 years old, there's plenty that I have to learn, but I just see that the statistics point to in the, in the direction of, you know, get married before you have kids, um, hold down a steady full-time job, um, things of that nature. Just those family values tend to lead to prosperity and a happy, happy life. So as far as like marriage, girlfriend, stuff like that, I mean, my opinion on that is that you should get on the page, same page with, uh, the person that you're trying to date, whether that be man, woman, girl, boy, whatever people are, he, she, z, all those sounds that we're going with these days. Um, you should make sure you get on the same page with religion, money, uh, politics, and kids. Those are the, those are the four things that I think that you should be on the same page with, uh, or else things are just going to go bad. And that's pretty much what my past relationships have gone bad over is that one wanted kid and one didn't want kids. One was religious. One wasn't religious. Uh, one, you know, was tight with money. One wanted to spend on a trip, you know, every night, or I mean, not every night, but every week or every month. And, uh, those three, those four things, if you can get on the same page, uh, with those things, I think that you'll have a good chance. So yeah, girlfriend is probably going to be commenting down below. Uh, she has her own channel and one day we just woke up and decided, Hey, you want to be uh, super rich? And she was like, yeah, let's do it. So we both started YouTube channels and now this one's starting to make a little bit more money. And, uh, hopefully soon hers will be making some more money too. So if you guys see her down in the comments, go ahead and subscribe. That'll help us out. Funny story about how the girlfriend and I met actually. Um, so for you guys out there that already know, I was, I was, uh, I was in college, did a little bit too much party in my first year. Um, got kicked out of my house by the parents. The parents said, no more of this. We're not paying for your college. So I was like, how am I going to pay for my college? Went and joined the army, went and enlisted for a year, came back. And then, um, so I was a little bit, uh, behind on the school and everything. So I was a sophomore. Uh, the girlfriend was a senior and, um, you know, they kept on inviting me out to come hang out. Eventually I finally came out and, um, you know, towards the end of the night, uh, I was walking her back and you know, I, I was standing at attention like you're supposed to do to your superior officers. And she just, she just took advantage of my, my youthful ignorance. You know, I'd never seen a woman before. She was in a position of power and, um, I was so young and impressionable that I thought I was supposed to, uh, you know, just do whatever she said. And that's what happened. Uh, if she says something different in the comments, she's lying. But anyways, moving on to the next question. What is your favorite movie? Ooh, all right. That's a tough question. So I don't watch that much TV or movies anymore. So it's going to have to be an older movie. And, oh, man, because it's hard for me to, anything with Denzel, it's hard for me to exclude it from my list. But let me just put that as an honorable mention. Anything with Denzel Washington honorable mention um the dark knight fantastic movie <sighs> but if i could only pick one i will go with the dark knight because i think it was probably the best movie of all time and i would like to give a uh, titanic an honorable mention and um the matrix an honorable mention and uh one last one i'd like to give an honorable mention nope that's it those are the best movies of all time. Aside from you, what's the best way to stay informed and learn about investing? Okay, I should probably make this a full separate video, but just going off the top of my head, um, I'm gonna go with alux.com. They've got plenty of book recommendations on there. They make some great top 15 lists. Uh, great YouTubers are uh, financial education, Jeremy. I'm gonna put pictures of these people on the screen. Uh, PPC Ian, great YouTuber. Uh, Brandon Beavis Investing, shout out to him. Um, oh man, what's the guy's name? I'm gonna put the dude on the screen. I, f I forgot his name right now. He's uh, Benny. Benny, Think Money with Benny. That dude, shout out to him, Think shout out to Benny. Um, who else? Jaspreet Singh over at the Minority Mindset. Gotta love him. Anything from Thomas Sowell, great books that he writes over there and uh just generally reading and uh staying focused on 
economics, staying focused on what's going on in the markets, and just constant learning. That's that's what I would say. You'll find it. If you look for it, you'll find it. And last, yeah, earn your leisure. There you go. That's that's the last one that I will recommend there. Thoughts on stimulus checks. So what do I think about stimulus checks? I think that it's good in the short term if you assume certain things. So you have to you kind of have to go down these branches, right? So first place we start is pandemic, right? If we go lockdowns, then you have to you have to send the stimulus checks. If you say no lockdowns, then the stimulus checks are good in the short term, but they're going to cause some long-term damage as far as inflation and as far as like propping up companies that maybe should have died, should have gone out of business because a lot of what we don't uh, acknowledge about capitalism and the capitalist system is that it's not just a system of profit, it's a system that runs on profits and losses. So if you prevent the losses, if you prevent the destruction, then you end up with things that people don't want. You end up with these zombie companies that essentially can't stand on their own two feet. You end up with the misallocation of resources. So what do I think of stimulus checks? I think that, and this is going to be a kind of a non-answer, I think that you should try to put yourself in a position where you don't need one. That's what I think of it. So whether they're good or bad, I think that you should try to put yourself in a position where you don't need one so that then it doesn't matter whether they're good or bad because you understand what happens when things go into inflation. You understand what you need to do for yourself to uh, not experience any of the bad effects of these stimulus checks. So. I'm not for or against them. I'm just going to buy another property, and then when it appreciates, then I'll be a, a richer man. So that's what I think about the stimulus checks. Uh, thoughts on Thomas Sowell, please. So I went into this a little bit earlier in the video. I think that he's a genius. I think that he really changed my mind. He changed my outlook, and um, I don't. I don't think that you know. I don't think of myself as a victim anymore. I think of myself as somebody who is not all powerful, but. You know, if I just keep on going, keep on grinding at what I want to get done, I can get it done because you are the power. And I really believe that. And I think that a lot of successful people truly believe that. They believe that they can achieve what they want to achieve. You just have to give it, let's say, 10 years and just keep on, keep your head down, keep on charging forward, and uh, you'll get there. So you kind of changed my mindset. I do believe that, you know, your beliefs are very important for example like if i thought that the floor was not going to support my weight and i was going to fall through straight to the center of the earth i probably would never get out of bed right so believing in yourself and uh understanding that economics and uh, money in general like different government policies it's not just it's not either good or bad it's it just is what it is right so one thing that he constantly says is there are no solutions, there are only alternatives. So if you go down one path, you cause good things and bad things, right? When you it, when you do a confiscatory policy, you take from one area and you put it in another area. And that has some effects, which are good to be aware of. So whether you think they're good or bad, it's kind of indifferent if you know where to stand to get out of way out of the way of the bad effects. So he's changed my outlook in that way. Where would you like to travel after the pandemic? Uh, going back to the girlfriend, she wants to go to Hawaii and Vegas, uh, Vegas to see her friends, Hawaii, because uh, there's a wedding. So that's where we are going. Where would I like to try? I guess I didn't really answer the question. We're going to, we're going to Hawaii. Uh, favorite meal is the last question. And also, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of your own responsibility to take care of your mental health know when you you're not okay and uh, I think that I do a good job taking care of my mental health despite a lot of hate that I receive a lot of uh, direct not threats but just like animosity but yeah take care of your mental health favorite meal I'm gonna go with smoothies um, for you guys out there that don't know I'm a vegetarian um, so I don't eat meat if you would have asked me a long time ago, I would have said sloppy joes or fried chicken uh, or even baked barbecue chicken, but I don't need any of that stuff anymore. Trying to uh, keep myself healthy and keep my mental health intact. Speaking of keeping your mental health intact, uh, yeah, there was, a, there was a comment the other day that said uh, I should change my outro music, so this one is for you. Hopefully you guys like this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in the next video. It's something about the girl that just makes my head wanna twirl. Oh, you got me want to tell all them other girls.